Marta, you were telling me the other day that there are Hasidic Jews painted on the wall in the opera house. Can you elaborate on that for me a little bit? Yes, there are. I feel indebted to them, to the Jewish society, because as a child, I lived during the Depression in New York where Jewish philanthropic settlement houses were built in order to give poor children in the neighborhood lessons in violin, piano, singing, dance, and art for 10 cents. Today there is no such thing. And these institutions I owe a great debt to and I wanted to include them in my mural. I'm this Jewish man because I was looking at him and I feel blessed when I'm in the opera house because I feel like I have a brother. I feel like, like right. there's somebody there. Well, I love their music, <clears throat> their dances, their festivities of weddings, even funerals. They celebrate life in a way that I wish we could, but we don't. So I celebrate with them by painting them on my mural. It was a wonderful childhood, and I wish children today could even experience one-fourth of it. Imagine walking into a place and having a violin lesson for 10 cents from a great teacher that gave his time, like Perlman, Isaac Perlman. Yasha Heifetz gave concerts in my high school. Pedrovsky came and gave concerts in my high school. There's nothing like that today, and it makes me cry because so much is lost. I have tried to preserve the past through my art. I'm doing the best I can, but somehow I sometimes feel my voice is unheard. But I keep trying, and through your help, we will succeed. I think it's really important to know something that we need to share with everybody. What future do you want to see for the Opera House? What would you like to see happen? I like to see the classical arts preserved through the Amargosa Opera House, which during my lifetime I've tried to nurture the classics through my art by creating new stage productions based on the classics through my art. I'd like to see that continuing because I'm not going to be here forever. Some people ask me when I'm going to be dancing again. There is an end to everything, but there should not be an end to the classics. They should be nurtured and performed in the Amargosa Opera House as I, long as it exists. I totally agree with you. Completely, completely agree with you. If you could give a message to a parent who has a child, what would you say to that parent as an artist? What, what would you want to tell that parent? I would tell that parent to nurture their child's creative talents as much as possible and even die for it if necessary because the world is not easier to live in than it was 70 years ago. One time I was in the supermarket waiting to pay my bill for groceries and a little girl in front of me grabbed a box of crayons. She put it in her mother's basket and I was ready to pay for it, and the mother said to the little girl, put that back, and she slapped her child's hand. You don't need that, that's not necessary. And I said, I offered to pay for it, and the mother said, I don't want her to be exposed to that. Just leave my child alone, this is my vegetable basket, not yours. So I realized that I was talking to an empty, empty ears. And I urge parents not to be like that because if their child has an expression they want to express in a medium such as crayons or pencil or watercolors, encourage it because without art in our life, there's no soul. It's true. I also believe that through movement, the fact that through dance, tap, ballet, it's also different ways of performing and having color just through movement. Do you agree? That's right, through movement. Well, I love to paint in Trompleo style, and I've painted in many of the rooms. It's my dream to paint in all of the rooms, but time runs out. 
in the dining room there's a staircase going up to another level and several people have fallen down trying to f step up on this staircase. <laughs> well, I hope we don't end up with a lawsuit. <laughs> now I think if somebody's trying to climb a wall I think it'd be kind of interesting to yeah. see what they do when they do it. We can't fall very far. No. I have a question for you. I've worked in the opera house now performing and I keep thinking that I know every character and deep down inside I keep learning something new, new, new. Is there a hidden jewel somewhere that I haven't discovered that's in the opera house? I don't know what it is, <clears throat> but when I painted the murals there was something that urged me to keep on going, keep on going, and I had a lot of trouble with my husband at the time. It could have stopped most people. But this spirit kept urging me along. It's, I couldn't see it, it was invisible, but it was there and I think it was in my soul. And I vowed to finish the murals and complete the ceiling in six years. So I followed the spirit's urging to the completion of the mural and the ceiling. From what time to what time did you paint? Like you woke up in the morning or did you paint the evening? Did you paint? When did you paint? I painted mostly in the evening. My, I was concentrating on my dancing in the daytime. But in the evening my husband was gone working at the local bordello as a bartender. And I would climb the scaffold and begin painting in the most glorious years of my life. I played Baroque music during that time and even climbed down the scaffolding to change the record because all we had were records in those days. And it was an experience that will remain with me for the rest of my life. Glorious six years of creativity. The past two months, three months, really coming out and working and being a part of this opera house, believe me, I've been bit by it. That's a great bite and I don't ever want to get let go. I, I love it. Well, I've been bit by it before I even started the murals. Those walls spoke to me and said, paint on me, use me, use my stage, use me for all your worth, and I have. In the beginning, people would say I was crazy or there was something wrong with my mind. There's nothing wrong with your mind if you pursue a dream. More people should do that. And now, with this recession, it's more important than ever to pursue your dream which I hope they will. Is there something in the Opera House that has not been painted that you wish you could have painted? No. Okay, there's like an opera or something where you think, oh, I'm sorry I didn't paint this or put this in there? There was Madame Butterfly that was in there and she was ruined by a drunk teenage driver that drove into the Opera House two winters ago and ruined the wall. I'm unable physically to paint her back again. This is a crazy question. Would you want anybody else to paint in that opera house or no? No. No, it's my child. Okay. I wouldn't mind some repairs if necessary. Mm -hmm. And in the dining room I definitely would encourage repairs. I know how to do it. I just have to show them what to do. Okay. Well, I'll do everything in my power to make sure that nobody paints or touches those walls in the opera house. And I'll do everything in my power to make sure that anything that goes up on stage or anything that's going to be performed is completely approved by you. There are no surprises. And maybe a couple of films when we have movie nights. <laughs> but yeah. as far as the performing, you're aware of everything that's going on in the of opera house. Of course I am. Of course. Just because I've had a fall and ended up in the hospital a couple of months ago doesn't mean I don't have it up here. I do very much so, in fact more so than ever. Yeah, absolutely. What do you look forward to doing, Marta? When we're getting you back on your feet, you're starting to I look walk. forward to getting back into my house, going upstairs and finishing my Completion of some small paintings I'm doing, very small. I have lovely frames to go with them. Mm -hmm. What I've done is a small painting of two fortune tellers. Oh, nice. 
another small painting of a kiosk in New York that sells magazines and papers by the subway. Another small painting I want to do of two chess players in Washington Square. And then another one I want to do of Miss Witherspoon's singing recital. <laughs> They're small paintings, five by seven. Right. And I enjoy doing them because they're done quickly and I can go on to the next subject. Do you remember the Pretzel Woman? Oh, we, I've got to do her. You have to do the Pretzel Woman. Yes. Yeah. In the hospital, um, you were having these amazing visions of the Pretzel Woman. And uh, yeah, she sold those soft white ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For five cents, I think. In those, those days, you could eat lunch for five cents, an egg cream. Have you been in New York at that time? I was there in the 70s, yeah. Yeah, I think some of those things still exist. They do. Yeah, they're a little more expensive. Yeah. Like chestnuts. Ten cents. Oh. They're, they're probably up. In the garment district, they had sweet potatoes for sale at lunchtime. And the garment workers would come out and buy sweet potatoes soaked in butter. Which was a good lunch, it's for quite sufficient. Sure. And hot dogs. The one thing about New York is the smell. Yes. And the smell of food and everything. And the chestnuts, the roasted, roasted chestnuts. Mm -hmm. I miss that, and I also miss being able to walk everywhere. Out here, you have to have a car to go a mile. Yeah. Back in New York, you could walk a mile easily. Here in Amargosa, where have you walked? Have you walked every oh, everywhere? Everywhere. With my cat Goldstein. Mm -hmm. We'd walk down to where the old mill used to be. I miss that. I miss walking down to the hotel. I'm looking forward to walking again, and we must have a walking practice soon. So if you'd like to say to your group of fans something, maybe now's a good time to do it. We'll keep coming to the Amargosa Opera House and see Sandy Scheller's show, inspired by the characters from my mural. She is helping to keep my dream alive. Come to Death Valley Junction and experience the painted rooms in the hotel and the wonderful cafe that we have and the murals in the Opera House. Everything is very much alive and I intend on coming back to perform again. So just be patient. Don't let me down. Come back soon and enjoy everything that's here now because there will be more even later on. As you were getting phone calls, I know you were so indebted and so grateful to so many people and touched by so many amazing things. And I know that at one time you were wondering how you can thank everybody. So I thought, you know something, maybe this will be a good little thing. I can send an email out and let people know that You've got to thank you. I am very say, yeah. thankful. I can't possibly write thank you a hundred and some times to the cards I've received this Christmas. So I thank you again. You, saved every, you saved every one of them. I still have them. Yeah, yeah. Marta has every single card from when she was in the hospital. She's got every card from uh, Christmas. I've, I've had hundreds of them. Yeah. And she rereads them and they're all so beautiful. And um, inspiring, so inspiring, so inspiring. And the messages that were given to Marta, Marta was kind enough to share with me, and it made me realize just how um, precious life is and how we shouldn't take advantage of time and we shouldn't take advantage of the sun going up and the sun going down. <coughs> well, time is the most precious thing we've got, we can't replace it. We can't go to the bank and borrow it. We can't make it up. There's no way we can save it. So use it while it's there. It's like a running river that you can't get back. So beware of time passing now more than ever. Thank you.